we're going to reflect on a story, a story told to us by our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which came in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu an and Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. In the beginning of this hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that there was only three people in history who spoke when they were babies. Isa ibn Maryam and Sahib Juraj, the companion of Juraj al-Abid. He was a worshiper from the Bani Israel. In the wording with the Imam Ahmad, he used to be a businessman. And sometimes he make a profit, he makes a profit, sometimes he makes a loss. He said, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm gonna give up that trade and I will gonna go, I'm gonna go for a trade that will never fail. And he decided to build a temple and to isolate himself, to seclude himself outside of the city, just to focus on ibadah, just to focus on worship. And he even overdid it. He built his sanctuary in a way that somehow is hanging and in, in order for him to come down, he needs a rope. He would need to climb. So he pulls that rope up that nobody can bother him and the whole time, uh, salah. And he had been doing this for a long time. His mother missed him. One day, his mother came and the temple was high up and she started to call him. Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj. And he was in his salat, he was praying. So he said, Ya Rabbi, Ummi o Salati, my mother or my salat, what should I do? So he decided to continue praying and not to answer his mother. When he finished, he didn't go to see what she wanted either. He continued to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24-7. That's what he did every day, all day. And then the next day she came and she called him, Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj. He said, Ummi o Salati, my mother or my prayer, what should I do? He decided to continue praying and not to answer the call of his mother. She came back the third day and she called him, Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj. And he said the same thing to himself, Ummi o Salati, my mother or my prayer. And he chose to continue his prayer. Even though now, three days in a row, obviously she needs something. Why didn't he go to her? Obviously his mother here, she became very angry. SubhanAllah, I'm coming to him, my own son, three days in a row and he doesn't answer. He doesn't come and see what I need and why I keep calling him three days in a row. So here she did what is very difficult for a parent to do. She made dua upon her own son. She said, Allahumma la tumittu. Oh Allah, don't let him die until he sees the faces of the prostitutes. There will be a fitna for him in his life because he didn't answer his mother. In the wording of Imam Muslim, Yaqul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَوْ دَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يُفْتَمْ لَفُتِمْ And if she would have made a dua that he is to absorb the fitna, drink the fitna, he would have done it. The mother made the dua and she went on. Shuf. Time went on and Juraj continued doing what he was doing, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day the people of Bani Israel were gathered in one of their sittings and they were talking about how Juraj is just fully, solely focused on the ibadah. 24-7 he's worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What an amazing guy. As they're saying this, nobody can distract him from his ibadah. As they were saying this, there was a prostitute there with them. And she was a famous prostitute. Somebody who was known for her beauty. Somebody who nobody could say no to. A big fitna. Something everybody knows what I'm talking about. She said, if you want, I'll distract him. I'll distract him from his worship. I'll do it. Obviously, she's gonna get paid. It's like a bet now. So, okay, if you can do it, we'll pay you this much. So she goes to him. Nobody can say no to this lady. She went and she presented herself to him underneath his building, his hanging sanctuary, and she showed her qualities. Subhanallah, fa'a'arada anha. He ran away, turned away, ignored her. She keeps trying and trying and trying and he's not paying attention to her. He rejects it. Focus on his ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, she became very upset and decided to make a trap for Juraj for the future. Look at the people of Baal, the people of evil, they'll plan for the future. It doesn't have to be revenge right now, it can be revenge in the future. She found a shepherd who was out with his goats or his sheep and she went to him and offered herself to him. Now he couldn't say no, he didn't have the same level of iman. So he fornicated with her until she became pregnant. And she started spreading the rumor, this is Juraj's son. Juraj is the one who got me pregnant. After nine months, she delivered the baby. Whose baby is this? She said, it's the baby of Juraj, the Abid. They said, Juraj, the one that all of us are praising, the one that the great worshiper, the great pious man amongst us, and he's fooling us, he's tricking us. The people became enraged. They didn't go to Juraj to see his side of the story. They immediately went to him and started to scream and they ripped him out of his temple and they started to beat him up. And he's like, Yo, what's going on? What's wrong? What happened? Because everybody respected him. Everybody cared for him. What's wrong with you guys? And they said, Zenate, you've committed fornication and the prostitute got pregnant from you and you're showing us that you're pious and you're this worshiper and they broke his his sanctuary it was made out of mud they destroyed it 
and they put him in ropes and they dragged him to the judge, the ruler. Remember the supplication of the mother? All the prostitutes were lining on the side of the road, looking at him. As he is dragged to the judge, to the court, he's looking at him like this. Oh, Yabtasim, and he's smiling. You know why he's smiling? Because he remembered his mother's supplication. Remember his mother said what? Oh Allah, do not make him die until he looks at the faces of the prostitutes. Oh, subhanallah, they brought him to the judge. Is that your son? Everybody's saying yes. He did not answer. He said, can I have some water to make wudu? Then, subhanallah, he immediately went and prayed two rakahs. And then he came to the little boy and he hit him in his side. Yani softly. Oh infant. Man abuk, who is your father? And he says, Ar-Ra'i, the shepherd is my father. The boy spoke at that age to show the truthfulness of Juraj. Immediately the people, because they had, they, had, uh, they had tore down his temple, they came to him, they started to hug him and kiss him and touch him and ask them to forgive them. And they said, we want to build your temple back from gold out of respect for you. He said, no, build it back from mud just like it was. And leave me alone. What we learn from this hadith is that if you are in nafil prayer or voluntary prayer and your mother or father called out to you, you should stop your salat and respond to them. Not the farad prayer. Farad prayer is a must. Also, this story teaches us the power of the dua of the parents. And pay attention to this. Because if you're a parent, no matter how bad your children might get, no matter how far away they might go, how far astray, how disobedient they might be, always remember the power of dua. And a lot of times when the children really go astray, it's because of the way you raised them. Remember that too. But remember the power of dua. And what can happen as it happened in this story, that it came back to him when he was put in this fitna where he was almost killed because of the dua of his mother. He didn't fulfill her right. She became angry. She made dua upon him. So it's important for us as parents to remember, always make dua for your children, never on your children. Because the power of the dua of the parent is, is strong, it's powerful. I have a story back in Australia. There was a sheikh, a sheikh that I met. And he said he used to teach back at Lebanon. And there was this girl studying for her year 12 exams. He said she would come to school and stay over hours and study extremely well. But she came to the sheikh who was her teacher and she used to complain. She used to be always crying. She said, yeah, sheikh, I have a problem with my mother. She is, she overworks me. When I go home, she overworks me, overworks me. And I do work and I do work and I've got to study for my exams and I'm trying my best. Wallahi, I do not disobey her with anything. And she is so harsh to me. She made a dua to me today. That's why she was crying. She made a dua. She said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you fail your exam and never pass. And she said, may Allah not be pleased with you. So she said, I'm crying, Ya Shaykh, and I'm studying hard now to try and beat the dua of my mother. So the Shaykh gave her advice and said, Tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have you know, reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True story. And he used to see this girl studying, studying, studying. Just before the exams, by about two weeks, she stopped studying, stopped coming to school. Subhanallah. And she did her exam and failed. The following year, he met her or he asked her friends. He said, what happened to that girl? They said, Subhanallah, Ya Shaykh. Two weeks before her exam, her mother was crossing the road in the car, struck her, she died. Her mother died. And as a result, the girl was so distressed over her mother, she couldn't study anymore. And she failed her exam. The mother made a dua against her daughter. The dua was not good, so the mother died. And the girl, obviously was written for her, but Allah, Mashi'atillah, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works with things is unexplainable. And the girl failed. She passed the following year. The dua that parents make against their children in these circumstances, be very careful about them. We know that the hadith of Sahih, which is in Muslim, that Rasulullah said that uh, three types of dua will never be refused. And one of them is the dua of a parent against the disobedient child. He also said, لا تدعو على أنفسكم Do not make dua against yourselves. ولا على أولادكم And not upon your children. ولا على خدمكم ولا تدعو على خدمكم Don't make dua against your servants. ولا تدعو على أموالكم Do not make dua against your wealth. عسى أن توافق ساعة يستجاب فيها فيستجاب لدعائكم Do not make this dua because you may coincide with a time where Allah is accepting duas and your dua will be accepted. And then also to the children, to the youngsters who are here with us today. Imagine now our mothers call upon us when we are on the internet, when we are Googling, Facebooking, when we are with our friends, with our buddies. Uh, yes, mom, I'll see you. I'm coming, mom, coming. Remember the power of the dua of your parents when you are disobedient. 
and you don't fulfill what you're supposed to feel as a son, as a daughter. If you get them to where they're so upset they make dua upon you, you're in big trouble. Always remember this story. You're in big trouble if your parents make dua upon you. My dear brothers and sisters, in the hadith, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there was three people, three people who spoke at the time when they were babies. Isa ibn Maryam was Sahib Juraj, the companion of Juraj, the young baby in this story. And the third one we didn't mention, which came at the end of the hadith, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us the story of a young baby who was breastfeeding from his mother, and his mother saw a man in very nice clothes on a very nice ride. And we can imagine that in the society we live in. People with fancy clothes, fancy cars. The mother said, Allahumma ij'al ibni mithluhu. Oh Allah, make my son like him. The young baby to teach a lesson, not just to his mother, but to everybody, to all of mankind, to everybody who hears this story. He said, Allahumma, baby speaking, Allahumma la taj'alni mithluhu. Oh Allah, don't make me like him. And then he went back to breastfeeding. Mother is surprised, a baby speaking. And then he's making dua against what I want from him to be rich and to, and to look good and have all of this wealth and fame, what have you. Then later on, she sees a young girl being dragged through the streets. They're beating her and cursing at her and accusing her of stealing. And she says, Oh Allah, Allahumma la taj'al ibni mithlaha. Oh Allah, don't make my daughter like her. The baby stops suckling and says, Allahumma ij'alni mithlaha. Oh Allah, make me like her. The mother shot. What is this? The baby explains that what happened, or the explanation came in the hadith, what happened, or why did he make this dua, is that the first one, he was somebody who was a jabbar, a tyrant. He looked good, he was driving a fancy car, but he was an evil person. So he said, oh Allah, don't make me like him. And then the other lady, the young girl, Miskina, she's been beaten, accused of stealing. And he said, even though she was accused of this, she was truthful. So I asked Allah to make me like her. Being somebody who's truthful, even if you, tr you, you face calamities and diversities, if you're from the Sadiqeen, you're going to be from the successful ones in this life and then in the next, inshallah ta'ala.